Hello comic fans, here's Earl Grey with two comic book series that were sent to me by the artists. Actually a while ago, but I figure better too late than never, so here we go. Miklos Felvideki sent me the first run of action journalism along with this nice drawing. So thank you very much. And thanks for your very enjoyable, fast-paced and entertaining comic. In style and content, it embraces and continues European and American comic traditions in putting a journalist in the center of the story. As the writer Eric Skillman puts it in one of his introductions, from Lois Lane to Tenton, Brenda Starr to Ben Urich, the crusading reporter is one of comics' most enduring tropes. Here we have Kate Kelly, added to that list of novel characters, working tirelessly in the pursuit of truth and justice. But as the word action in the title suggests, this is no depiction of boring investigations and inquiries and journalistic, so to speak, footwork. No, our heroine Kelly flies high to prevent an alien invasion right in issue one before she has to deal with mad scientists in the second issue. These mad scientists change gravity, by the way, but become and assured Kate Kelly saves the day again within a few pages. But as the gravity changed, we have to turn the book around in between, which is just a neat way to convey the story. Maybe this sounds ridiculous, but just because it is, in absolutely all the right ways. Comic fun in capital letters. The drawings are perfect for this kind of story, and the writing is on point, mixing well-known tropes in a fresh and playful manner. It's quick and snappy, and especially Beatles fans will love it because of reasons. I really hope that they will continue with the series. The first five issues were collected in a trade by Onipress, which is still available. It's called Action Journalism with Kate Kelly. Good news. Now to Jordan Barry Brown. Some years ago, he already sent me the first issue of Cosmic Slop about space pirates hijacking the vessel of some floating hip hoppers. There's an important revelation in these pages about the nature of the monolith in 2001 Space Odyssey and much, much more. I talked about it in Penelogy 309. But this has been just the beginning. He unfolds an intriguing and fun story, but tells us even more through the wonderful and detailed drawings about the future world he imagines and creates. Back then, he sent me a zine as well with lots of reproductions of his drawings. Speaking about drawings, he sent me this fun drawing as well. Thank you very much, highly appreciate it. And now, some months ago, actually rather, he sent me the continuation of Cosmic Slop with issue 2. And we are now introduced to this woman and some other characters. Even though I still enjoy the floating hip-hoppers the most and all the correspondent lore like graffitis and the obvious importance of vinyl records in the future and so on, even though I would not have thought that this could be possible but his art even has improved a notch, combining the love for detail, almost Jeff, Jeff Adair-esque with clever coloring, using the light brown background to create white highlights and dynamic panel layouts and 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 it's really wonderful stuff and since i mentioned that the floaters are my favorite characters in the issue so far i was immensely delighted by this extra extra zine by jordan in which they get all the attention they deserve while primarily harvesting the title givings cosmic slop at least that's how I understood it. Anyways, this little thick book is a joy to look at as well. Halfway it's filled with full page art and some pictures from creatures from the world of Cosmic Slop. From his creator-owned imprint Illstrips I received The Adventures of Brick Bear as well. 
And yeah, usually I take pride in being not one of them tubers who just read the blurb on the back in their quote unquote of reviews. But no way I could sum up the content of the story better than this. As a balmy twilight Friday evening sets in, Brick Bear can be found smoking his pipe and foraging for mushrooms in the last remaining light of the day. He paddles downstream toward his bear cave, heavy laden with shrooms, a rental copy of one of his favorite chick flicks, and some special teas picked up from a trio of fiending owls. Now home alone, he takes the time to brew up some bolumum map boop, boop, bolumum boop. However, he fires up the VHS player and sinks into the couch. Brick Bear soon nods off to dreamland, ripping across the Arizona desert in a Dodge Challenger. And he's not alone. An explosive helicopter chase ensues into an encounter with a mysterious desert-dwelling serpent lady when he is abruptly woken from his slumber by his girlfriend. Brick Bear is summoned to escort Miss Satana to a party and he is the designated driver of a motorcycle. The pair are bound for the mansion of Dario Crocolla, a budding young Italian film director. The road ahead is a perilous one and our night riders encounter high-speed death races, mushy beasts and a female prisoner ghost bus along the way. Once at the party, things take a turn for the surreal after Brick Bear takes a few more nips of his home-brewed boop. <laughs> Bop. Within the walls of Dario's mansion, he meets a flirtatious tiger man, scheming slashers, a potential new love interest and an immortal blob-worshipping cult. Take a flip through the pages of this dizzying comic strip to find out for yourself how this wild ride unfolds. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, buy his stuff. He has his own website called illstrips.com with all the books I've shown, plus merchandise and posters and other very cool stuff. And he has a YouTube channel as well, which I stupidly forgot in my last U compilation of YouTubers. So yeah, I hope I made up for that. And go get Action Journalism Volume 1, of course. Let's have fun reading comics. Thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.